today's just been nuts, so forgive me if I'm a little scatterbrained, but uh, we are going to pick up where we left off on control flow statements, and we're going to be looking at the while and do along with the break and continue, and we're going to touch on the for loop. So um, if you're reading along in the official documentation, you can see there is this while and do while. While loop evaluates the condition before the loop, and you can see this nice little example, versus a do while loop evaluates the condition after the loop. That's confusing. So let's look at these a little bit here. So let's say, mm -hmm. let's make a variable. Let's call it bool, because I like things indented. While running, we're going to say print. Now, if you're new to programming, one thing you should be aware of is that a, a loop needs a break, if you will, or it needs to be able to stop execution of that loop. Or what happens is something like this, where it just goes boom, and it just runs forever. You can see down here, it just runs and runs and runs. Um, and to kind of illustrate that, what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable here. We're going to say counter. If you don't know what that is, it's uh, the same thing as the counter equal counter plus one. It's actually shorthand for that. And we're going to say, we'll call this the while counter. So if we were to just run this right now as is, it's just going to count until eventually it gets a stack overflow and dies or until the underlying framework resets that into a zero. Sometimes it'll actually flip it back to a zero for you. Um, I actually don't know what it does in Dart, but every framework kind of handles that a little bit differently. Uh, Stack Overflow would basically be like the whole program just crashes and you get an error message where it will say value out of range or something like that. So what we really need to be able to do here is say if counter greater than or equal to 10, actually say five just because I'm lazy, then we will say running false. So what we're really doing is we're saying, hey, stop running. Um, but we tell it, hey, set this variable to stop running. Let's run that. And you can see it says while counter equal blah, 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 down to five. So what's going on under the hood here is it's saying while evaluates this expression must equal true. And because we're setting it to false here, every time it reiterates through this loop, it's reevaluating. So when it gets to here and that's false, it just stops. So we can say print onto the next. And you'll see kind of what's going on here. And it says bang, 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 onto the next. And then it just stops. Now the do loop is very similar. And there's our evaluator. And we need to reset that actually. Running equal true. Uh, let's see, counter equals zero. And we're going to actually put in some print statement here. Let's not say waiting, let's say done with while. And then down here, we're going to say done with do loop. We can actually just take this, and you'll see that it's pretty much the same thing. probably help if we put this as a do instead of a while, so it's less confusing. You see it's pretty much the same thing. So why do we need two of them? Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, it depends on when you want your statement evaluated. Do you want it before or do you want it after? Uh, typically what this will do is it'll take action, then evaluate the statement. Or I shouldn't say typically, that's exactly what it does. It'll execute the scope of code, 
then evaluate the statement. Oops, I just screwed that all up. And the contrast to that, the while wow statement will actually evaluate, and then if it's true, then it'll run it. It's a unique difference. You can get into some pretty special situations. Um, you can actually get into trouble a little bit, like if you have, uh, like if you're doing like socket programming and you're not ready to receive data yet, or you're not ready to send the data, but you do a do loop instead of a while loop, you can get kind of messed up. So just understand the, the basic differences between that. Um, essentially, they do the same thing. It's just the order in which your statement is evaluated. Now, this could also be rewritten like this. What is that actually doing? Um, well, it's doing a few things. First, it's ignoring our evaluator. And it's actually breaking out of the scope. You ever play that game Breakout? That's what Break does. Remember how we said it kind of hits the brakes? So it's going to run this scope, but when it hits this break, it's going to say, nope, I'm done, and it's just going to break right out. So which one should you actually use? Well, it depends on your situation and what you're trying to do. Um, you could also say, well, counter is less than five. I'll actually say less than or equal to five. And let's do this. We're just going to ignore that whole running variable. Clear a buffer. Now, you can see how things change a little bit here. Now we have up to six, where we really wanted, to, you know, because it has this counter in here, we only wanted five, now it's going up to six. So you would say, you know, less than five, less than five, run it again, bang. So you see how it really depends on how you structure your code and how you write it. Um, there's really no correct way of doing it. That's the beautiful thing about programming. Um, personally, I don't like to put this evaluator here. I like to use a actual variable. That way I can check that variable state at any time. And then I like to actually set the variable. I don't like to do the breaks. Personal preference, that's just how I like to do it. i to make sure this still runs the way we expect it for the tutorials. And now we're going to look at the for loop. For loop's a little bit different. Actually, let's cover continue here. Um, real quick, why not? We'll say if if counter equal four, then continue. This is the difference between break and continue. Um, remember how break will break out of the scope of execution? And what we're going to do here is we're going to say, I don't like doing that, but we'll do it anyways. Um, let's run this so you can see exactly what's happening here. One, two, three, five. We totally skipped over four. So what this is doing is we're saying if, and then we're evaluating here, the counter is equal to four, continue. What continue does is it says, okay, I've heard everything I need to hear. This is a lot like arguing with your wife. I've heard everything I need to know, and I don't need to hear the rest of this. Let's just go back to the beginning. So what this does is it actually says go back to the next iteration and starts completely over. Let me go back up here so you can see it. So in this case, it'll go one, and it'll go through two, it'll go through three, it'll go through four. It'll go through, hit this, and say, nope, I've heard everything I need to know, and it goes back up here. So this never gets executed. And on five, it runs all the way through this and says, hey, counter is greater than or equal to five. And we can actually just say equal to probably a better or streamlined way of doing this. Counter is equal five, then break. You know, just hit the brakes. I'm done with this whole thing. I'm getting a divorce and I'm leaving you. And it just jumps out and it says done with the while loop. So there you go. Now, back to what we were going to talk about, which is the for loop, which is a little bit interesting. 
for loop if you're new to programming you're looking at this going oh my gosh this looks insane I don't want to type this out it's actually very simple and it's very easy to get in the first two times you do it you're gonna get it down the rest of your life and it's in almost every major language so here we go I equals zero let's say I equals zero notice that little guy right there and then uh, we're gonna say I less than five I plus plus so what are we doing here? What is all of this? Let me put this back up here for people on YouTube yell at me and hurt my feelings. Let's just print this little guy out so we can see what's going on here. And we're saying I zero, one, two, three, four. So we've done this five times. Let's, let's kind of examine this. The for statement actually takes three separate parameters. And I almost wish those were commas, but it's just not how it is. And that's a holdover from the old C, C++ days. Um, so this first one is actually setting a variable. We're going to say we want a variable named i and set it to the value of whatever, in this case, zero. Then we're going to say while, because there's actually a hidden while in here, while i is, and then whatever, and we're going to say less than five, increment i. So there's our incrementer is back here. So basically we have what we want, when we want to do it, and what we want to do to it. And then while that whole thing evaluates to true, we're going to execute. Plus we have our variable from the top. <sighs> Confusing. But why do we need this? Imagine this. List, and we're going to say string. We'll call this list equal new list. I have a bit of a sore throat and it's kind of bugging me a little bit here. So that's how we make a new uh, list of strings. Now we're going to say list.add Everybody always asks me, why do you always put your own name in these? I don't know. It's just because I'm on the spot and I just can't think of names. I'll come up with names like uh, uh, Slarty Bart Fast like I did in the previous tutorial. Um, I just, on the spot, can't think of really anything other than like myself and maybe immediate family. If I could spell immediate family. Alright, so let's say we've got a list of people, and in this list we've got three people. So, hmm, how would we go about doing this? Remember, this is a zero-based index, right? So we're going to say list, and we're going to say i is less than length and then we're going to increment so let's just run this and see what happens here so we know that we have three items first one starts with zero so what we can actually do here is we can say we're gonna try this I'm not sure if we can do this but we're gonna try it it might blow up and I may have to put it outside, but it would be really cool if we could do this. Boom! Didn't do it the way I wanted it to do it. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's just put it outside. That way it's easier for people to follow along. So, for the sake of the tutorial, this is what we're going to do here. We've got our string, and in there we have our i variable equals. And it's not actually signing, this is just a string. And then we're going to catenate, is that right? Catenate that string with the value of that item. So you can see that zero is Brian, one is Heather, two is Chris. I kind of want to figure out how to get that to work. Uh, element at, let's try element at i and see if this actually works here. I'm sure there's a way to do this. And that's why I'm kind of wanting to try it here. Forgive me for just a minute. See if that actually, I don't think that's going to work. Fingers crossed. Nope, didn't do it. All right. Ah, uh, dear Dart developers, if you are, or Dart, uh, yeah, Dart developers would be right. If you're watching these videos, please make that work. That was awesome. I'm probably not doing it right. There's probably a better way of doing it. But uh, that, in a nutshell, is how you would do it. Personally, I prefer the shorthand.
get rid of that scope operator there. Same thing. So, why do you need the for loop? What's really the difference? I mean, couldn't you just say while we are not at the end? Well, you could, but it's very ugly. So, what a for loop replacement would look like. We would say, hmm, counter equals zero. Um, let's say, hey, while counter is less than list dot, oops, list dot length. I have a nasty habit of putting that on the other line. Counter plus plus. Let's say print. And here we're going to say. Oops, we want it to be counter. Actually, let's make it I. That way it's more intelligent here. And I. I and I and Let's run this. Ooh, what do we got here? What, what's going on with this? Invalid value not in range, exclusive three. Hmm. So what we're saying here is we have it starts at zero. And hmm, I is less than length. So let's try this. You see why this gets a little hairy here. Do this and see if it just runs. Okay, so that does run. And let's get rid of this guy because that's what's actually causing the error here. And let's just see what we got here. Boom. Oh, see, one, two, three. So we got it in the wrong spot. That's really what's going on here. So we need to actually increment this afterwards. Now it'll run. There we go. So this kind of uh, illustrates some pretty good point. And let's actually put this. So we can see the difference between the two. Um, so we've got our four and then our four replacement. They do exactly the same thing. It's just one is a little bit more complex, a little bit more error prone, while the other is a little more streamlined and elegant and kind of, if you will, industry standard. So if you ever get like a professional job writing code and you do something like this, your quality control agent or your manager is probably going to sit you down and say, why didn't you use the for loop? Because this is exactly what the for loop is designed for. So anyways, those are the distinct differences between them. Uh, just to recap, the while loop evaluates before, the do while loop evaluates after, and the for loop is perfect for going over lists and enumerations. Whew, that was a mouthful. Thank you for watching. If you found this educational and entertaining, be sure to go out, visit my website. Um, all the code is out on GitHub, and I've got a link out to the repository right now. Um, if this was helpful, uh, feel free to donate. This site is run 100% off your donations. Thank you.